Hi guys, you might remember from an earlier video that I showed the carpenter making an interesting joint for a large beam here. Now that beam was for what was to become our main bedroom. So in this video I'll show you what has happened since that point onwards. <laughs> The idea here was to extend the original ceiling in the other room in the same style. Unfortunately the original ply ceiling had suffered water damage so we had to replace it. Now this style of ceiling is called a fumiten. It's different from the ceilings in all of our other rooms in that you're able to walk on top of this ceiling. In fact above this ceiling is where our future office space will be. We insulated the inside of the exterior walls using foam and put up soundproofing material on the adjoining wall. I painted part of the ceiling way back in 2020 and then never really touched it again until last year. So in about August 2021 I started work on this room again. Keep in mind that we moved in in December 2020 so for over six months we'd been sleeping in the washitsu. I think the original beams were painted in some kind of varnish but I decided just to go with uh, wood wax instead. I found that a mahogany colour matched the original beam colour best. These two posts are structural so obviously we couldn't remove them. They get in the way a little bit when opening the closet door but they're not too bad. This shelf here is a display shelf as I'll explain a bit more about later. Here I'm making a big mistake. So I was a bit too lazy to make some drywall mud so I decided to use some leftover shikui which turned out to be a really bad idea as you'll see. In this room we wanted to do something a little bit different to the rest of the house. I'd been inspired by a Japanese ryokan, that's Japanese inn renovations, and wanted to go for something a little bit more bold. I couldn't find any shikui that came in this dark blue colour, so instead I used a similar product that has 60% limestone in it, but doesn't qualify to be called shikui. It's got a, a bit of a thinner texture to it. I found it a bit easier to apply than shikui, and it's supposed to only require one coat, that is, if you do it properly. Almost immediately afterwards you could see the shikui that I'd used to plaster the gaps coming through. So I gave it another coat and a similar problem occurred. So I read the instructions and of course it said if you're plastering over shikui you need to use a sealant. But we needed to use this bedroom straight away 
as we had guests coming over who were going to sleep in the washitsu. The bed that we had at our old house matched this room nicely I thought, so we put that together and once the guests were gone I got to work trying to finish off the room. This time I did use drywall mud, but I did run into a few more problems again. I know you're supposed to use corner bead here, but they don't seem to use it so much in Japan, so I decided to plaster it freehand. This time reading the instructions I gave the wall an undercoat. On these walls I'm using Kesodo, which is a diatomaceous earth plaster. Diatomaceous earth is a naturally occurring sedimentary rock. It's supposed to have similar properties to Shikui in that it's anti-odor and also regulates humidity. It also comes in a wider variety of colors and is easier to apply than Shikui because it's a bit thinner. The downside is that it's pretty expensive. One 5 kilogram bucket costs around $150. Fortunately, I only needed less than one bucket for the entire room. And you can see the plaster lines showing through. Obviously, I didn't do a very good job there. But in my defense, that wall was not perfectly flat. I think by putting that soundproofing material on created a bit of an issue there as the other walls turned out fine. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Rather than redoing the wall, I decided to try something else. Japanese houses traditionally have walls with the posts exposed, so I decided to see if I could recreate that look in order to hide the seams and also give the room a more traditional look. And if it didn't work, I could always just go back and redo the wall. So I finished off plastering the shelf and then it was time to tackle the other wall, the blue wall again. I put a clear sealer over the wall and then did a test plaster to see if that it worked and it appeared to have done the trick. So I put one more coat on and I was pretty happy with the result. Throughout the house I've been mainly using Philips Hue and IKEA smart bulb, but the Hue strip lights were way too expensive, so I found some instructions online on how to make your own using parts from Alibaba.
I've been trying to decorate this bedroom on a much lower budget. Like this lantern here is just a pretty cheap one I found online. It's not one of the nicer ones you can see at some of the uh, Japanese boutique hotels or ryokans. I equipped it with uh, IKEA smart bulbs. and set them up in the Hue app. And I picked up a couple of smaller lanterns for the shelf. We haven't decided exactly what we're going to do for the rest of the decoration on this shelf, but rather than rush in, probably just take our time and pick things up along the way. This PowerPoint's supposed to be for the air conditioner that we are yet to install, and the electrician hasn't set that breaker up yet. So with the light set up, we can now use different scenes such as Autumn Gold, Savannah Sunset, Frosty Dawn, Red Light District. So there are still a few things to do, for example, I probably want to put a clock somewhere, but I haven't quite found the right clock just yet. Also, I need to make a side table for the chair there and also bedside tables. And a dresser slash desk. Thank you for watching, remember to like and subscribe, and see you soon.